Hi, my name is Elizabeth Stern, and ever since I was a little girl, it has been my dream to be a flutist in a major symphony orchestra. A year ago, that dream was tested. I was sitting in the waiting room of general surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital with a right hand that was swollen and blue, and I had completely lost the ability to move the fourth and fifth fingers on my right hand. I felt like my dream was really being tested for the second time in two years. I was sitting there with my dad, my mom had died two years before, and ever since then I had had a slew of injuries and illnesses. The surgeon came out to get us and kind of said rather bluntly, you have a compressed vein, you're going to need major surgery, you have significant nerve damage, and to alleviate the source of the compression, we are going to have to take out your first rib and one of the muscles in your neck. This came as quite a shock, and I fainted clean away. When I had sort of recovered, and we talked a little bit about it, I realized that this was really a defining point for me and I would be lucky if I was ever going to play again. I also realized in that moment that I had absolutely no clue how to deal with a major surgery or recovery process, but the one thing that I did know how to do was give a performance. From that moment on, it was really my intention to bring my strength my strength that being rising to the occasion in high pressure situations where I often only had one chance to get something right and bring that to my healing process and to my recovery process. And that gave me a sense of grounding and control over something that was completely unknown to me and filled with fear and terror. I went through the surgery, spent a week in the hospital, had completely regained full hand strength after the surgery, but didn't know how much pain I was in for. It took me six weeks to be able to lift my arm above my head, to turn my head in both directions, months with nerve hypersensitivity where it burned to wear a shirt, where it was hard to type on the computer, where it was a challenge even to sit up because the neck muscle that had been removed, I had to learn to compensate for. There were so many times during that process where I wondered, is my dream of playing the flute, which is as much physical as it is emotional, is this ever going to happen for me? And I realized that one thing that always had helped me in preparing for difficult things on the flute was to visualize my experience and to visualize the situation going as well as it possibly could so that I set the pattern of relating to myself in a positive way and also seeing myself get through it. And I set the intention that I was going to get through it. And because I really didn't know how things would end up, I figured that I had absolutely nothing to lose. But I did want to know looking back on it, that I had done absolutely everything I could. From that first night in the hospital, I had started visualizing, visualizing myself healing well, visualizing myself doing something I enjoyed, visualizing, visualizing myself playing again. And I continued this visualization for the months after the recovery process, realized along the way that what would really also enable me to get through it was to find the meaning in it. And that perhaps my journey as a musician didn't require hours spent in a practice room, but that it required being an artist of life and feeling everything and learning how to connect with people from a vulnerable emotional place to really being able to feel those fundamental emotions that I would then want to channel in playing for an audience. I realized that my job was really to open up to what the moment had to teach me to really learn everything that I could, to find one moment that would resonate even when it felt like nothing was working. I learned in the process that it was so important to not just focus on, but to appreciate what was working and to really build on that. Tal Ben Shahar says, appreciate the good or the good depreciates. And I actually, I found this to be very much true. It, was, it would have been very easy to focus on what I couldn't do, how I couldn't pull a shirt over my head, how I couldn't go for a run, how I couldn't pick up my instrument. But when I started to focus on the progress that I was making and the kindness that people displayed in my life and little moments that really made everything worth it, I started to have more of those moments. That lift in my mood and experiencing those positive emotions and the gratitude and appreciation began to affect my physiology. I noticed that when I was in a place of anxiety or fear or anger, I would become tense and my pain would get worse. But when I was in a place of gratitude and appreciation and openness and really softening into my experience, the pain would lessen slightly and I was able to do what I needed to do that day to make progress. I had started eight months later with two minutes of playing. 
two minutes seems like it's absolutely nothing. It would have been nothing for me a year or two ago, playing six or seven hours a day. Now I'm up to 30 minutes, increasing by two minutes each time. Realizing that healing for me was going to be softening into the experience and learning what I could and really viewing this as my performance enabled me to work on the skills that I would later use in my music and that I would want to teach to others. And shifting the focus onto what I could learn and how I could later give to others gave me a sense of purpose and meaning to get through the process, not just for myself, but so that I could contribute to the world.